<laughs> How are you, brother? Good to see you, Good man. To see you. This is Tim. First time I was telling you about one of the most genuine, humble people. He's literally the Tokyo plug. So he's gonna be with us for the next few days, showing us around, good spots to shop, good spots to eat. So let's get keep it going. moving, yeah, let's go. I'm really excited to share with you guys what we're about to eat. This is actually a one Michelin star soba noodle restaurant. This has actually been rated the best, if not one of the best soba noodle places that you can go to in the entire world. It was actually featured on Anthony Bourdain's show. He came here and he featured this place. There's a ton of hype behind it. And luckily we were able to walk in. You typically need reservations at this place like weeks in advance. It's called Sarashina Hori. So my dad and Tim are inside right now. They've started ordering. We're about to eat some of the best soba noodles you could eat on the entire planet Earth. So let's go. Moving on to the signature dish here, the restaurant, which is the Sarashina classic uh, buckwheat noodles. I'm sure a lot of you guys have tried cold soba noodles before. Most of the time they have this brown, sort of like purplish color. Now, as you guys can see, these are completely white. Now, the reason why it's completely white is because they actually use the core, right, of the buckwheat. So it gives it a completely different color. Now, the proper way to eat this is you take the ponzu, pour it like that. And you take everything and you mix it in. Now you're supposed to put wasabi in, but I'm not a real big wasabi person, so I'm not gonna put any wasabi in there. And then you take your noodles, like so, put them in like that, let them sit in there for a sec. And the proper way to actually eat this is exactly like Tim did. You're supposed to slurp it. That's a way to slurp your noodles in, it means good. So a really cool interesting fact that Tim just told me about this place is that towards the end of the year this place is packed. Now the reason why that is is because the Japanese believe that eating soba noodles, especially, you know, the longer the noodles are, the longer your life is supposed to last, right? So that's why this place at the end of the year, everyone is like super lined up and it's like all packed trying to get in here because people are trying to enjoy soba noodles as part of their heritage as it resembles, you know, long soba noodles represent long life. More life, fam. Oh, yeah, more life. Oh, and another fact too, check this out. Since 1789, 229 years old. Which means literally, is that, would that have been during the samurai era? For sure. Oh yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, 200 something years. That's crazy. Oh, yeah. that's crazy. So samurai come here with your salt on the mm. side, mm. you know? So as you guys do know, we are here in Tokyo and in my opinion, well I would say here in London are the two shopping capitals of the world. In terms of like exclusivity, first proper day in Tokyo, I said to the swag guy right here, I'm like yo, bring me to some fire shops right now, let's do a little bit of shopping, you know? So we're gonna go pull up right now, you know, maybe drop a little bag. Alright, just to give you guys an idea of how insane the shopping is here in Tokyo, look behind me. This entire building is an Hermes store. That's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten floors. Literally all Hermes. That's just fucking insane. I've never seen anything like that in my life. So we're just roaming the streets right now of Ginza. Actually, last time I was in Tokyo, I stayed in this area. And yo, like, I'm sorry, man, but Tokyo is just actually the most fucking lit, proper city in the world. Everything from just like the design aspect of these buildings, the layout of the stores, the culture, the food, the organization, the cleanliness, everything about this place, I'm just in love with. Obviously, the only thing that's a little bit difficult is the fact that A, I'm covered in tattoos, number one, and B, the language barrier can be difficult sometimes. But literally, apart from that, it's my favorite city in the entire world, like by far. Honestly, all the buildings and shit, like the lines, yo, like the fine lines and like the layout and like the style and shit, yo, I just, I fucks with it. Pull up and I drop like 10 Pull up and I drop like 
Don't ask me about what these are. Don't ask me about what we do, because we're copping. Ended up gripping those Prada pants. You know, a little bit of fucking Prada schmada for the fucking boys. But I'm starving right now. We're about to be pulling up to one of the best sushi places in all of Tokyo. Tim recommended, believe it or not, yo, this place was where Obama came and ate last time he was in Tokyo. What's the name of the sushi place we're going to right now? Kyube. Kyube. Tell me a little bit about it. It's really famous. It's been here for hundreds of years. Hundreds of years? Yeah. Oh, so it's really old. It's really old. Oh, yeah. crazy. When President Obama was in town, he had lunch there with the Prime Minister. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. So, yeah. would you say out of like anywhere in Tokyo, this yeah. is considered like one of the best in yeah. terms of quality? Definitely. It's a top three. Top three. Yeah. Amazing. So, that's where we're going to go pull up right now. Sushi is like by far my favorite food in the world. If there was any type of food that I had to eat every day for the rest of my life, it would be sushi. And we're in Tokyo, which is the capital sushi place of the world. And Tim, you know, I trust his judgment. He knows food, he knows fashion. Pretty much those two things can never go wrong when it comes to Tim. And he's telling me this is some of the best sushi in Tokyo, top three. So we're gonna go pull up there right now. He's like the master in, in, uh, in this counter. When he is uh, ready to make sushi, the other guys filling up the rice, you know, getting the fish ready for him. And also, you know, his body language is really moving. He has to feel the energy by using his body, feeling the product for the uh, cooking. Another thing too that I noticed, just even apart from tasting, like apart from how good the food tastes, mm -hmm. just to watch like the organization, yeah. the steps and everything is, very methodical yes. from how he lays it out mm -hmm. everything is always placed in the exact same spot like you'll never see him put it down in a yeah. different area each time it's always in the same spot yeah. you know even where he leaves his knives and he's so focused yeah it's Every amazing time. to watch yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> See him preparing it step by step, and then as you see him add each little thing, so you're like, hungry. oh, it's gonna be so good. Squid with the salt already. Mm -hmm. No soya. No soya. No soya. Mm -hmm. Guys, I just, I honestly, I could tell you how incredible this is, but it's not even something that you could like describe unless yeah. you actually came here, mm -hmm. you know? You guys see how. This is prepared, right? Yeah. Essentially, like every Japanese restaurant has adopted this method of sushi. It was actually mm. invented here in 1941, like he was saying. Now, uni is my favorite type of sushi, but the problem is, is obviously back where I'm from, it's very hard to find good quality and stuff that's really fresh. But mm. honestly, this is a real deal. Mm. This is where it was invented. Now, now I can taste history of this sushi. That is insane, yo. Try. Okay. They're still alive. The shrimps are still alive. When you'll be eating them, they'll twitch inside your mouth. Can't okay, get any fresher than that. Almost like tiger. Mm. You can chew open it. Yeah. You want to sushi? Yeah. 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 I don't think you can get any fresher than that. I love <laughs> Good? Love yeah. I know. Love sandwich. Mmm. Mm. That's insane. Chef, you keep on. Thank Sashimi oh, dog? Oh, 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 black sauce on that? Oh, look at that black sauce, yo. That gringo, you mix that black sauce with the gringo? That's a wrap, dog. 
Maybe put a bit of black sauce on there. <laughs> <laughs> most enjoyable meal I've ever had. Mm. Hands down. That's the most enjoyable meal I've ever had. Beautiful. Really enjoyed it. Most also, enjoyable meal I've ever had, Dad. I'm just telling you that. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. I'm saying What's that to you. you. Oh, I see it. No, but for real, Tim. I came yeah, through yeah, heavy yeah. on that. That was amazing. Thank yo. you. Thank you, Tim. Thank you like, so much. One I, great it's taste. one of those things that I can't actually describe yeah, to you unless and, you come uh, here and try it yourself. Yeah, awesome. It was that it was insane. Everything from like the start to the finish, the quality, the preparation, the level of respect that I have for him and his craft, watching him do his thing, you know? The rhythm of making the sushi, right? The rhythm. <laughs> the rhythm. It was so good, yo. Honestly, we were also super lucky that Tim, uh, his family happens to know the owners there, so they were able to get us a reservation because normally speaking, that place is like a two, three month waiting list. Man, it was incredible. It was so good. But I think that wraps it up for today pretty much, right? I think that wraps it up, boys. <laughs> I think that wraps it up for today. We got lots more coming though. We got a couple more days here in Tokyo. Got a lot more fire shit planned for you guys. So thanks so much for watching today and you know, see you guys soon.